Sit back, relax your eye, ready now while you make studios. It's the Danny Brown Show, we about to get live, let's go. It's the Danny Brown Show, sit back, relax your eye, ready now while you make studios. It's the Danny Brown Show, we about to get live, let's go. Yo, 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 what's up, dog? It's the Danny Brown Show coming to y'all here at YMA Studios in beautiful Austin, Texas. Beautiful. 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 I let you know where my mind's been at, man. I've been I've been out of the goon cave, man. My no fap journey is, is starting to take effect of me, man. I've been a lot more clear headed though. I've been getting a lot of work done. It's hard to be on be on horny demon time when you fucking working on music and shit. I've I've learned that uh for real, it is, man. When you locked in making music and shit, if you release that demon, it, it takes some, like, it, it just takes you out, man. Like, I can't really be that focused on music. There have been a lot of times where I've been, like, on some horn dog shit, and I'm like, all right, let me get it out the way with, and maybe I can finish the song. And then you do that, then you don't finish shit. So I've been keeping my um, horn dog energy suppressed, and it's been coming out real good with the music thing, man. So what's up with y'all? How are the Poof Boys doing today, man? Great. Yo, what's up, man? Yeah. Good to have you, Danny. Yeah, man. I've been chilling, man. I've been um, my back hurting and um, playing a little bit too much NBA 2K as well. So my <laughs> sciatica is flaring back up. <laughs> I got my character up to like a 95 already. Oh, my God. And I'm already like 400 bucks in the hole. Cause they got all these new now they got um you can go like they they've been dropping new clothing drops like like it's real life and shit I've been spending money buying buying gear and shit got the hail star on but all right whatever man y'all know how this shit go all right man we got the homeboy Jerry Free in the house man how you doing man dude I'm great I didn't understand half of what you just said so I'm yeah. just gonna warn you right off the bat what is horn dog Horn dog. What are you off of? I I got like I pieced it together. I feel like I'm in Spain and I can understand a little bit of horn dog. That's just when the the devil just starts to take control of your genital area. Okay. Are, are you, you not? Kid? Are you taking an act of celibacy? Is that what not, I'm to not, understand? I, I still do some humping and pumping, but j- just on not your no, own or with just other not people? no stroking. Just not no. So you're off of masturbation At, for this time being. For the time being. Yeah. How long you been off? Off 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 the hand. It's been. I don't know. It's been kind of. It's starting to all blur together. When was the, When when was our weekend? And maybe like a month. I like ago? that they're keeping track like of your been, masturbation been about a schedule. That's a. That, this is a really good team you got. It, here. it was real my, hard. When my I was, producer would be like, "What are you? I'm not writing down when you masturbate." It was. A, it was real hard though when I was because I think um, just being in hotel rooms when you're on the road. Yeah, that's I mean that's like what, the, that's like half of what you do. Yeah, I know that was like the ultimate trigger. But no, I I was I, I brought my steam deck with me. So I've Your been Steam Deck. Yeah, what's that? That's a um, handheld PC video game. Oh, okay. So I was playing a lot of. Pers- I've been back playing Persona, getting ready for um, Metaphor to drop. I actually just fucking pre-ordered the deluxe edition. So you're asshole. a big gamer. I wouldn't say as as big as I used to when I smoked to when I it. smoked weed and shit. Right. I would sit around all day and fucking play video games, but since I've been kind of sober, it's been. So I you're mean not NBA on weed, 2K. No weed, no masturbation. No, we, yeah, I've been, I've been all at once, drug free, and um, alcohol free for over 500 days. 500. Con- yeah. Congratulations. I mean, I had to go to rehab though. Oh, so okay. I'm not like, so you're like I was fucked up. Oh, really? I wasn't like you know. Well, it's funny. I did. I didn't know much about you, Danny. Yeah. And I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Yeah, for having likewise, me. likewise. Um, but th- uh, you have a reputation. This is uh, they go. He's a rapper and comedian. I'm not a comedian. Well, they, this is how Fuck you were presented that. to me. Rapper, okay. comedian, hallucinogenic taker. <laughs> that, that is what was told to me. And I was like, honestly, one out of three of those things I have in common with him mm-hmm. as a comedian. I'm not a hallucinogenic guy. Mm-mm. I'm a drinker. So I, I, I'm with you on the drinking. Mm-hmm. No, the um, drinking was the worst for me. It was? What do yeah. you drink? I drink anything that you give me. Anything? Yeah. Were you, one of, like, were you a real alcoholic? I didn't drink like, beer. I didn't drink beer, though. No beer? Fuck beer. I'm not a beer drinker yeah. either. Yeah, I, yeah, any alcohol. I had two martinis today. It was great. Already? God damn. Well, I played golf this morning. And uh, I mean, I was a maybe day drinker I, Is this my intervention? What's going no. on here? <laughs> I was a day drinker myself, but Well, but, I, I I played golf this morning with, a, with with this guy who his wife is a fan invited me to go mm-hmm. golfing with him. So we had this like I woke up at like 7 this morning, went and golfed, and then it's like noon and yeah. you just like we're out. But golfing and drinking goes hand they in hand. They go hand in hand, yeah. yeah. And uh, so I was like, yeah, I'll throw throw a martini back. And then 
I came here to chit chat with you. So I actually had a buddy that I had in rehab that um he was he was super sober and everything, but his family lives like on a golf course type yeah. situation, and that's how he relapsed. His From the ass, golf course. Since I've been out, he's relapsed like twice. He's been back yeah. to rehab like two times already. Like, hey, God damn, bro. It's but so it's so hard. I, he I, live, it's some baller shit. It's like over there in, what is that? Like the north, like, I want to say like the main area, Boston area or something like over there. I'm from Boston. The, yeah, the northeast area kind of. So he lives on a golf course in Boston? It's like, yeah. I want to oh. say, is it? New Haven, something like that. That's Connecticut. Yeah, 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 something like that. That area, New England area. Yeah, yeah, the New England. No, there's area. some nice golf courses yeah, up there too. You live up there? Uh, no, I live in New York. But uh, no, I, I like. Are you the type of alcoholic where like you're sober one minute, and then like a second later, like just gone? I just couldn't stop. You just couldn't. You would just go the whole night. Yeah, some people. That's the you know. I guess that's the the difference. Some people can just have one drink. Right. And be like, all right, it was no once so I had one. So the bartender goes, Danny, what are, you, what are you having? What's your first choice? I mean, tequila. I was tequila. a tequila guy. Yeah. Then, you know, but yeah. But then coming to Texas, everybody was on the whiskeys and the bourbons. I started right. indulging in those and shit. Yeah. You're like, well, you know. Yeah, but I don't miss everyone's it. drinking, I'm I in. will say I don't miss the hangovers and none of that shit. That is the thing about drinking. When you have like two nights in a row that you're like, nah, I'm good. Shit, six nights in a row with me. Well, six nights in a row you go... Am I a superhuman being? Like no, your, your body not at all. feels good. Not at all. You just no? drinking to fucking feel better at that point. No, I'm saying when you get off of alcohol oh. for six days in a row, you must no, feel you just, great. No, you just fucking out of there, just dead to the world. You don't feel good? Fuck no. Okay. I used to feel horrible. No, I'm talking about when you get off of alcohol. You said you're off 500 days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does oh, your now, body yeah. feel good? Oh, yeah. I, I feel a drastic change right i've lost weight since like all type of shit yeah that's great even miss mentally like how i even think you're like, sharper i mean and then i don't i mean it, it does affect my social life in the sense that i don't go out now you know? right because you get the, the it, there is a thing of like why would i even go out yeah it's right. just not certain shit people invite me to shit i just be like man i'm not i don't even there's nothing worse than being sober around a drunk person like when they're it's the like worst. in your face and i hate to be like that hypocrite person to be like that but i can't be around drunk people now man right well that's not to say that you you know you when you were drunk you liked being around oh, drunk no, people. people like who cares and people hated me being right drunk. So now like I, I get it now it goes I, both ways yeah, like now i totally get it i had a woman i was at the bar the other night and this woman came up to me. I was at Soho's, and I'm sitting at the bar in New York City. This woman just comes up to me. And she goes, did, "She's hammered." She goes, "Did we match on Hinge?" <laughs> <laughs> and, I go, and I look at her, and I have to be nice. I go, "No, you know, I'm not looking to be mean to someone. She's mm -hmm. drunk. Who, you know, I've been there. That's the thing. As a drinker myself, I go, I get it. She's having her night." As my grandfather would call it, she sucked on a bad ice cube. Oh shit! So I go, I go. No, I don't think we matched on him. She goes, "Are you sure?" <laughs> and I go, "I think I'm more sure than you are." Yeah. And then she goes, "Are you Jared Freed?" <laughs> and I go, "Yes, I am." She goes, "I've been to like seven of your shows," mm -hmm. and I'm like, "I'm like you." It was like watching like the clumsy nature of how this pickup went for her. Yeah. Cause she knew who I was from mm -hmm. minute one. She was looking to she like was trying talk to throw to that me. pussy on you. Right. Yeah. And I was like trying to, you know, get the pussy away. Mm. And I Was go, she hot? She's cute. But I you know, at that point she's drunk. Yeah. She's you know, I'm not we're not at the same level. This mm -hmm. ain't this ain't happening. Like, <laughs> like, honestly, if I even talked to her in a way that was more inviting, I would look like the biggest creep in the mm -hmm. world. I would I would be a creep. So I go, yes, that's me. She goes, I've been to like seven years shows. And I go, thank you. And then she goes, so what's up tonight? Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm like trying to be as cold as possible to just like, and the problem with drunk people is like, there's no hint taken. No. Like, and we see that it shows. Like, if you're just like, hey, that table that's hammered. Hey, you guys are being awful. Yeah. They'll, you could say to them, they're being awful. And they'll go, yeah, we're being the most fun ever. And mm -hmm. they're like, no, you, I just said awful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I just said it to Being your drunk face. is fun, though. Right, because you're in your own world. Yeah, you don't give a fuck. Bro. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that girl, didn't, she got escorted out. Oh, yeah. Like, I was a Kardashian. Like, she talked to me too much. Oh, shit. Oh, they put her out for just talking to you? They they, oh, don't, oh, they, they, they could see the that it was uncomfortable. Yeah, they they were like, what's going on? The bartender was like, is everything okay here? I'm like, yeah, we're okay. And she's like, 
whatever <laughs> you know like and then they were like okay get her and, and the soho house is a classy spot yeah, right. it was she didn't fit the vibe like yeah. listen if this was 3 a.m at a dive bar mm -hmm. i'd be the same i'd be like hey yeah i am jared free you know like i'd be on her level yeah but you know your drunk has to fit the vibe i love soho house they actually i actually played an event for soho house and they gave me the um, free membership for like yeah like a year or some shit, and I didn't even use it once. I was that was like the dumbest shit. Oh, ever. dude, the one here is. That's I know. I've been, I've been here with these guys, but it's beautiful. All right, we're jumping to some of these ex Danny's man. You can hit me up at Danny at the Danny Brown Show. That's Danny at the Danny Brown Show dot com. First up, we got tipping for hoes. Ex Danny. Yo, Danny, what up, though? Long time fan of yours. I've listened to every podcast you've done. Shout out to the booth boys and girls. Shout anyway. Out. I was just getting my freak on with a bop when I sent her home in an Uber and I had the option to tip it. I always ignore it, but I had to really think about it because I got high. And I was going to tip someone for driving a whole home. Oh, oh am I going to tip someone for driving a whole home? I understand it's, <laughs> if the girl is a bop, but... I like I that guess he's he respectful his, <laughs> and disrespectful at the same time. I guess he got as good as money, but fuck. I'm already paying for the Uber. I also want to say I am a person who tips when I do Uber Eats or at restaurants, so I don't know how I feel about driving. It's a different, but fuck that. What do you think? Are you generous when it comes to tipping? How do you feel about tipping culture in general? Fuck me, suck me, lick me, no ditty, or whatever y'all say. Shouts out to the boy, JJ. <laughs> it's quite a predicament this guy's brought I up. can't say I, I, I don't tip um, every Uber. I mean, once You don't tip every Uber? Sometimes they talk too much or just like, if, if it wasn't so, a... If it wasn't a great ride, I wouldn't really tip. But if if they were nice and shit, yeah, I, I tip. What do you them. give? Um, whatever I spent. Like it kind of like you know do that percentage shit. Well, it shows you. It shows you like eighteen, twenty, yeah, twenty-two. I do the twenty. I do the twenty. You do the twenty. Mm -hmm. Okay. I do. I I gotta say, the tipping culture thing. I'm on the other side of this. Yeah. I'm tipping on everything. And tipping not to, culture with me is if a motherfucker recognize me. Then I tip them like a hundred so bucks. Like or something. Danny yeah, maybe like if I go to a restaurant, they're like Danny Brown. Right. I'm like, oh shit. So then I tip them like a hundred dollars. This might come back to bite me. Yeah, because I don't want to be on Reddit, Reddit or something. Motherfuckers <laughs> be like, I, I serve Danny Brown. He ain't tip shit. No, you know? I have a policy now. Like to me, this whole tipping culture thing is a way of these. Like I'm not a big like I'm a pro capitalist, mm -hmm. but this is one of those things that like they're making us peasants fight amongst each other yeah like you know when they flip the screen and everyone's making fun of flipping the screen they have to like tip for everything i'm kind of like yeah these people aren't getting paid enough mm -hmm. it's it's starbucks we should be mad at starbucks for the fleet uh, for the screen flip yeah not the person who flips the screen like i don't know i i, like, I tip i'm i'm like pro tipping i do 18 on the uber i just like barbershop I, I tip big at the barbershop what do you give um how I much always, is a haircut for you um, it depends on where I go, but um, I always try to lease. If if I always spend a hundred for a haircut, so if it's if if, if the it's haircut's fifty, 50 I'm gonna give them I'm gonna give them fifty. Fifty on a fifty? Yeah. If the, if it's that, because I I just I just capped my haircuts at a hundred, so I'm like whatever what, it is. So if it's ninety, you're giving a hundred. So but so no. So if it's two hundred, I'll give them an, I'll give them another hundred. Another hundred? Yeah, something like that. Because the two hundred dollar haircut is gonna be fire. Right, you know, they're gonna do the facial, you know, it's other shit that come with it. But the forty five dollar haircut, they just the razor hurt a little bit, <laughs> a little rough. <laughs> this in a seedy <laughs> little area, you know what they're I'm saying? Sharpening it on a rock. Yeah, it's yeah. not. The, even though that's the thing, though those those cheap haircuts in the hood, shit like that, them be the best haircuts. Right. See, I don't know, you know, the haircut yeah. culture. Yeah, them be the you best know, haircut when you go to these fancy places and shit like that. They, I mean, they do a lot of nice shit. It smells good. It's a nice but in the black community, this is like a big thing. Yeah, the cheap haircut. Yeah, man, it, it's been hard. I finally found a black barber here. It is gangster when I go over there, though. I used to live in Harlem, and I went into a black barber shop, mm -hmm. and like music stopped. Oh shit! Yeah. Like they were like, "What's, you know?" Yeah. And and I remember the guy like circled me, like. You could tell, like it was like a reverse situation. Like, I don't know what to do with this. Right? He looked at me. He, he literally like so went, he circled around me, and then he goes, "Okay, okay." <laughs> he had like, to map it out his head. Right, like, how am I going to do this? Right? He, yeah. He was like, uh, "Okay, I can handle this. I can do this." Because I think, um, like black barbers, not they're not like scissor cutters. Right? No, it, it made total sense. Like, it yeah. wasn't like I was sitting there like I could understand that. Yeah, they you know. Use you know, they used to clippers and razors, but right. like using scissors, they like, ah. 
Have know. you ever seen when those like guys, like white guys, get the black barbershop haircuts and they like give them a total fade? Mm -hmm. And sometimes it looks good. Yeah. Sometimes it works out. I'm scared of them motherfuckers. I Who? see a white dude with the black haircut, man. I already oh, know. Oh, you're like this, uh, this guy's trouble. I'm scared of him more right? than I'm scared of niggas. Like, no, oh, this nigga's he's he's down for jail time. This like he's not. It's, he he will crash out. All right, next up we well, got. Hold on, we didn't answer that guy. Oh, would you tip the Uber driver of the Uber on bringing the your girl the yeah. bot home? Yeah, I would have tipped, especially if it's like two in the morning. You late have night, to tip. Yeah, super late night like that, and and he pulling up. You know, he got the bitch up out of there. So yeah, he saved my life. This yeah, this guy saved your life, yeah. and also, what's the difference between? I don't understand why. The, Maybe the in the daytime or, I wouldn't like if it, if it was like rush hour if it's a lot of shit if it's but like late night just the fact that this guy's out driving Ubers at three in the morning he was able to pick this bitch up give that man a tip. Also, there's nothing that is more studly like there's nothing more like baller like you have done it than having sex with a woman then going I got the and then she's like I'm leaving and you go I got the Uber mm -hmm. like they I react. Think you're supposed to have the Uber anyway though, don't you? I don't, listen. Supposed to, not supposed oh. <laughs> to. You feel good about yourself. Like I, I think you kind of feel like, look at me. I'm Jay Z. Yeah, I got you, you know? out of here. But I'm gonna get you to Uber XL. XL. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have we fun got, in that Yukon Denali. Yeah. With big wireless providers, what you see is never what you get. Somewhere between the store and your first month bill, the price you thought you were paying magically skyrockets. With Mint Mobile, you'll never have to worry about gotchas ever again. When Mint Mobile says fifteen dollars a month. When you purchase a three-month plan, they mean it. Mint Mobile is amazing. We all use it here at the office, and their customer service is very great. All plans come with high-speed data and unlimited talk and text delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. To get this new customer offer and your new three-month premium wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash Danny B. That's mintmobile.com slash Danny B. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash Danny B. $45 upfront payment required, equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three-month plans only. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes on a limited plan. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. When you think about businesses that are selling through the roof like Allo or Skims, yes, they have a great product and marketing, but an often overlooked secret is actually the business that is making selling simple. For millions of businesses, that's Shopify. Nobody does selling better than Shopify, home of the number one checkout on the planet. And a not-so-secret secret with shop pay that boosts conversions up to 50%, meaning way less cars going abandoned and way more sales going. So if you enter your business, your commerce platform better be ready to sell wherever your customers are scrolling or strolling. On the web, in your store, in their feed, and everywhere in between. Shopify is great for up and coming businesses to get their stuff out there to be able to sell. So businesses that sell more, sell on Shopify. Upgrade your business and get the same checkout Allo or Skim users. Sign up your $1 per month trial period at Shopify.com slash Danny B. Or lowercase, go to Shopify.com slash Danny B to upgrade your selling today. Shopify.com slash Danny B. We got sibling situation. Hey, Danny, my girlfriend's little sister is very annoying. She ain't no kid either. She's 21 and lives with my girl, but acts like a baby and uses a baby voice whenever she's asking for something. She also eats all the food I cook for me and my lady that I pay for. In my mind, if you aren't sucking or fucking, you aren't eating my food. Do I bring this up to my lady or am I the problem for finding this irritating? Chandler. This guy's going to have a problem when you have kids. Yeah. How are you going to feed those kids? They can't suck and fuck you. Yeah, it's, that's crazy. I, I'm, it's a I'm, weird rule. Yeah, you have to change you your rules. You can't say that in this in this in this Diddy era. Right. This Diddy era, we gotta we gotta chill you, out. You will suck or fuck if you're gonna eat my food. Nah. Like I think he needs to change. How about like I think it's him. Yeah, because that's just girl sister, man. So like, if you really love that girl, right. One day that she might be his sister in law type shit. So I feel like anybody that you're in a relationship with, like their family, you should respect them the same way you respect the person you with. Right. Well, sometimes the answer's in the email. When you say, the only way you'll eat my food <laughs> yeah, is if know, you suck me and fuck me, I think we have a bigger issue here. Yeah. Right? So, like, I think he has to amend his policies. Yeah. You know, like, how about, like, listen, if you're going to, like, eat my food, you have to clean up the dishes. Yeah. Like, if he did that, 
then maybe this woman, the younger sister, would be like, oh, of course I'll clean so the So you dishes. know, like, he go out on a date with a bitch. He like, oh, yeah, we fucking tonight, huh? Right. Yeah, this guy, I, well, I think he needs, it's life, being happy with someone is really having, is about expectations and reality. Mm. If you keep your expectations low, then you will be pretty happy with people you come across. Oh, my God. I don't like it. <laughs> right? But, but I'm saying if his expectation no, that totally is makes sense, suck me like... and fuck me or I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> like he's kind of set a bar that is really only attainable by the woman he loves. Mm. So you can't just love your, you know, I think he needs to really, the policy change would help him. Yeah. Please and thank you. All right. How about that? Yeah, I, but I if think, I'm cooking for you, I get pleases and thank yous. Yeah, but the annoying little sister thing. I mean, I guess we're, baby we're, voice sucks. Yeah, the baby voice sucks, but baby voice to be fucking. Baby fucking. <laughs> what are you trying to get fixed up with the younger no, sister? No, no, I'm just saying. I know the, that's that's a nasty one. She's a young nasty. All right. No, here's what he should do. He should start <laughs> talking to her in her baby voice. Out baby voice, her baby voice. She will get annoyed with you. She'll never want to eat with you guys again. But yeah, I, I I guess that could be annoying. I mean, she lived with her. I mean, you got to deal with it. That is what it is. Well, imagine, like, talk to me in a baby voice. Oh, no. No? <laughs> <laughs> Daddy, I thought we were getting to be friends. No, no. no. We're going to do an act out. <laughs> no Diddy. No Diddy. No. <laughs> All right, next up we got Danny. I'm I will I'll be brave if you'll be brave. You do a bit. Maybe this is a whole new rap career for you. No, no, I, baby I'm, voice Danny Brown. I'll rap it enough. For the, all right, I wish. <laughs> Come on, just give me one. I'm saw we. No, I'm, do it, man. I'm, no, it's nasty, man. I, I'm just I, it's listen. Nasty. See, look at but uh, see how you feel right now. She will feel the wrath of that awkwardness. So you, if this guy, if she's like, I'd like some of the steak too. Would you like some steak? But then that's flirting. And then she'll go, well, then it will ruin the whole thing. Yeah. You got to blow this up. But then that would be like flirting. I feel like the, the older sister would get mad at that Well, the shit. older sister would go, why are you talking to her like that? Well, I'm just matching her energy. Oh, she's man. baby talking me. Now we're talking. See how communication Maybe happens? That, that would be flirting at that point. See, I think you won't do the baby voice because you associate it with flirting and sexuality. Yeah, it definitely is. To me, a baby voice is a baby voice. All right, man, we got to get off this. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Danny Brown. <laughs> hey, Danny. <laughs> is there anything you regret in regards to your career or are there any missed opportunities that haunt you? Shouts out, Taylor. What is this? Your parents writing in? I know, right? What is the, the ghost of... Horrific nightmares? What's going on? Does anything haunt you? I guess I would say the only thing that probably do that could just come to mind off rip is just certain certain times in my career where I didn't appreciate what was happening because I was just so fucked up all the time. Right. Well, so didn't they like, listen to the beginning of this podcast? Yeah. You regret the drinking. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm you saying go to rehab. Like, that's because you regret drinking. It was a lot. lot of times where like shit was going so good, but because I'm always so fucked, you know, it's like okay. Depressing. So is there anything you didn't like wake up for? Was there something that you were like you? Missed? I did miss out on a hundred gigs feature. I think about that a lot because I really hundred gig. I really, I really love hundred gigs. That's like one of my favorite groups. What is it called? Hundred gigs. And hundred um, gigs. Yeah. Okay. And they had actually um, reached out to me to do a feature. This was like early, and I um, I was just alcohol. I was just drunk at the time. I was always just so drunk. You were drunk and over. you didn't get back to them. And you, no, I, I I had intentions on doing it, but I just was going through some fucked up shit in my life. Right. And it just never you know materialized, but. And I hate that now because I fucking love them and I would love to work with them now. So, so listen, maybe this is you manifesting. No, I, maybe I the gex are listening. A few times. I kicked it with Dylan a few times. We talked about doing something. It's just never, right? It's just never happened. But you know, but yeah, it, but it. I, I mean, on top of them, or even just certain shit. Like now, I can hear shit, and I'd be like, "Fuck, I was fucked up when I did that. I right. wish I would have took that I a lot did, more I wasn't serious." My best self. Yeah, I would. I wish I would have took that a lot more serious. You, you know, know what you're gonna regret one day? What? Not doing that baby voice. <sighs> you could have let go. It could have been your new baby rap. voice is too freaky, man. You know what my my biggest regret? Growing up, um, I was dry. I'm from Boston, mm -hmm. the Boston suburbs area. My dad was driving us home from Rosh Hashanah. It was Rosh Hashanah, and I'm in my suit at the you know Jewish holidays. And he's driving us to my grandmother's house, and he pulls over the car, and he goes, "Jared, go look over there. It's Larry Bird cleaning oh, out his shit. garage." And he goes, "Jared." 
get out of the car, go get Larry Bird's autograph. And I was like, no, I don't want to go. I'm in my, I'm in my temple mm -hmm. suit. Oh, yeah. I'm embarrassed. And he goes, Jared, go. You have to get his autograph. It's Larry Bird. And I go, I don't want to go. And I was like 12 years old. I was mm -hmm. like, I don't want to go. And I start crying. And my mom in the front starts screaming, Jerry, drive! Oh, and shit. my brother starts crying. So now this whole car is oh, crying. Yeah. And I go, Dad, you go. You go get his autograph. My you dad's like, no, I'm not he's going. going to do it. Yeah. Right. And now in retrospect, I'm like, yeah. I don't think a 45-year-old man leaving his family yeah. to get an autograph is like a good look He for wouldn't him. have did it. Larry right. Bird, he'd be like, fuck out of here. You know? Right, he'd be like, get out of my driveway, you old man. I got one of those regrets too. I seen fucking Barry Sanders in the airport, man. You didn't go up to him? Every, every, people were, it was a lot of people already talking right. to him and shit too, but Barry Sanders is like God to me, man. Like from Detroit being a fucking yeah. Lions fan during that time and just watching all the shit Barry went through, man. And I really wanted to fucking get a picture with Barry Sanders, man, but I didn't bother him. So hopefully us talking this out, you can get a Barry Sanders Because I never picture. fucking see people and be like, I want a picture with this person. Right. You know? I, I, I see, if I see someone, I've only gotten pictures with Rob Lowe once. <laughs> because I have a 15 minute Rob Lowe bit mm -hmm. that I do on stage. And then I went up to him to tell him, I was like, I in the bit, I'm like, I if I talk about how one day I'll tell him. Mm -hmm. And I saw him and I was like, my stomach turned. I was like, I made this promise on stage. I have to do it. Yeah. So I went up to him and I was like, Rob, I talk about you on stage every night. And he goes, you do the Atkins bit. He knew about it. Oh, shit. And I go, oh, my God. And he was very nice. Oh, and then we took a picture together. Damn, man. Because I, like I say, I never fucking so to see somebody that you want to get a picture with. You know? Right. There's not a rapper that you'd like? I did. It was Nas. Oh, yeah? Nas is my like all-time favorite rapper. Okay. So, yeah, I actually got a chance to meet Nas and took a picture with him. So Nas is like the rapper's rapper, right? Like people, like there was a time where not. I, I remember in high school, like into college, Nas was like the guy people liked if they really knew rap. I wouldn't say the rapper's rapper. I would say he was like the child prodigy of it. Okay. Because he started to get his break at around 16, 17, around that time. And, mm -hmm. and he was way better than all the older rappers, you know? Okay. So I feel like now, like when younger rappers come out, it's like, oh, let him grow up and he'll, you know, figure it out, like. It's only been certain, it only been like a few rappers that came out at such a young age where you're like, fuck, he's better than grown men type right. shit, you know? And I mean, I, 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 I was and, that, and back that day, it was fucking like Rock Him and Coogee Rap and, you know, it was- What year like, is this around? Early 90s, 91, 92, was, 93. Was Nas, did he not play the game? Yeah, he definitely played the game. He did? Yeah, okay. that's, where, that's where a lot of people will have their fucking gripes about him, is that oh, he played really? the game. Yeah, because okay. eventually he started to try to make those pop songs and- you know, Jay-Z started killing shit. He started to make fucking, you know, weird. And he wasn't really all that the best at making those mm. kind, of music, that kind of music. So the early Nas was like... I mean, he always... Every album, he still got he still got some Nas shit yeah, on yeah, him. Yeah. You know, but, you know, when he started making these singles, he made a song with Puff Daddy. Like, that when the original, you know... Even though that album is... No, nah, it's, it's up there, but... See, it's funny, because, like, I'm not, you know, I'm not even a music fan I like music, but I don't, I'm not like into music. Mm -hmm. So when things hit me, I'm like, I'm last to know, yeah. you know, like I'm not like early on any music. Mm -hmm. So when the Nas stuff would come my way, I'm like, why don't I hear more Nas? Like I thought oh, he yeah. was so good. You could because tell. Because he doesn't, it wasn't like commercial rap. It wasn't. It, it wasn't right. going to get played and on I'm radio. And I'm the commercial guy. I'm yeah. getting the commercial. It wasn't stuff. like he making radio songs, but then he eventually started to make radio songs. Right. You know? But it, it was, like I say, it wasn't like, like Jay-Z was the one that was like, that's a commercial. The, the Jordan guy of it. He can make the fucking street shit and he can fucking make the fucking right. commercial radio shit. And there's no drop off on either one. Interesting. You yeah. I, I, that's why I thought he was a rapper. That's why rapper, you can say right. Jay-Z is the greatest ever because, you know, he had, it's no drop off with him. It's going to be to top tier every, regardless of anything that he do. Where Nas, he can make the amazing fucking album. But when it comes to like making singles that's going to sell the album, he wasn't probably the best at that. Right. Interesting. All right. But, yeah. Guys, your four just got a hell of a lot more awesome. Thanks to Bespoke Post and their all new platinum lineup, a box of awesome collections. Whether you want to drink and eat more awesome, dress and travel more awesome, or explore more awesome, Box of Awesome has you covered. We received the watch, a nice little speaker. They got outdoor supplies, kitchen supplies. They got whatever you want, man. To get started, take the quiz of boxofawesome.com. Your answers will help them pick the right box for you. 
It's free to join and they release new items every month across a ton of different categories. When you become a member, you'll have access to stellar discounts across a plethora of products. We're talking 30% off or more sometimes. Get a free mystery gift with your first monthly shipment when you sign up at boxofawesome.com and enter the code DannyB at checkout. That's boxofawesome.com code Danny B for a free mystery gift with your first monthly shipment. Boxerawesome.com code Danny B. All right. Next up, we got extra chromosome loving. That's the name of this person? No, that's the name of the. Um... <laughs> 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 that would be a fire name. What is that? That needs to be like my 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 burner account. Extra chromosome. <laughs> That's what I, thought, loving. That, 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 I was like, what are you skimming Reddit for these questions? What's up, Danny? I've been seeing this guy for a while and I'm not certain, but I think he might be a touch autistic. He's really into puzzles and has a small toy train collection. <laughs> he hasn't been diagnosed or anything, and I don't care if he is or isn't, but I should bring this up to him in some way. Just wondering, shouts out to Sarah. Okay. Have you noticed that there's this like need to diagnose other people when you're not even a doctor? Yeah. Like, why does she have to diagnose any? I don't understand. I mean, it this. sounds a bit autistic. Here's Puzzles a, and train sets. I have a video that went viral and recently it got a lot of views, and the comments are all telling me I'm autistic. Oh, right. It's, I, I, I'm like, I'm, I'm not just saying this. What was the video? If you go to my Instagram, it's about play it. I mean, and I was like, I did this thing where I was like, I think I'm too old to be single. And the whole premise of the bit was like, I spent the whole date talking about cups and ice, which I do have a casual interest in cups and ice, okay? I like a nice cup. I like the ice, with like a certain type of ice. I think the half moon ice, not as great. It's me at night facing the camera. So I go into this whole thing. I think I'm too old to be single. I was on a date. And at one point I noticed how much I liked the ice they had at the restaurant. And that started about a 10 minute soliloquy about ice types I like, ice types that are overrated, the half moon shape, slides too easily out of the cup, how crushed ice has to be the right atmosphere and setting to really bring out how good it is. It, it was like, it's the thing I had the most passion about on the date. I, I, I she asked about my family. No, 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 I'm not gonna talk about my family. I'm not talking about ice. And then that got me into cups and how much I love a plastic cup and how it depends on how it feels in my hand. And These are all things I do cup. believe. It's too big. And sometimes I like a small plastic cup depending again on the setting but I wouldn't have a plastic cup that was small with crushed ice. It doesn't go well together. This is what I was talking about. This is the type of conversation that happens at retirement communities. I told them to go to the Delta Sky Club because they have a great plastic cup and a pretty good ice. They actually do. But it goes well with Thank the plastic you. cup they're serving at the Delta Sky Club. What am I talking? I'm, 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 I'm getting into it now. This is all I care about. I think so too- if you go to the comments, the amount of people that are just ready to tell you that you are autistic. I mean, it's given on the spectrum vibes. Is it? Yeah, I would think so. Well, here's the thing. I don't know if this is like something people, you know, like to me saying you're on the spectrum, that's like a mean thing. Like I would be a <laughs> dick. <laughs> like I, 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 like I, that's not something I would do because I would believe I was being mean. Now I'm like, is me even saying that that's mean? Mm-hmm. Mean? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that was just too much. Right, like, like now it's like folding in on itself. Yeah. Like, because when this woman writes in, should I tell the guy I like that he's on the spectrum? Who cares if you like him? Yeah. It doesn't matter. What yeah. does he need this diagnosis for? What is he going to do? He's not going to get like, like, like what is what, what is this going to help him with? What At this age, at this time, you know what I mean? I guess it's to not be so judgmental about certain acts certain shit maybe yeah but that's for her not yeah, him he's yeah. living his so, life he's saying, doing if, puzzles he's doing legos he's got if, director sets he's having a great like time if she knows she can normalize this now because she know he ain't all the way right i guess i don't know i'm just saying because i, I understand for a five-year-old i think we are on a spectrum at this point in our life that's why it's called the spectrum yeah that it goes from zero to 100 there's no there's nothing we're all on a yeah, spectrum yeah i'm pretty like if we sure we're on to get deep the, 
I don't I'm know. I'm not the uh, most normalist fucking guy in the fucking world. I'm pretty sure something's well, off. But yeah, but this is. The, I do think we're in this like world now where everyone's looking for their thing. Like, we all know that we live in like a punch up, punch down world. Yeah. So it's like no one wants to be the one that's too high. Like no one says they're rich. No one says mm -hmm. they're smart. We. It's like kind of like a an era we're in, where it's like you have to make sure everyone else knows you have it difficult. I and that's the only pissed. way you have an opinion on anything. I don't know. I was kind of pissed when I when I went to rehab and that did, had to do my evaluation. Because I just knew they was going to tell me I had something. Like, you know? Right. And they, and they found that I was just normal. I was like, what's the <laughs> bullshit? There's no excuse. I wanted to get right. the, I, I mean, I wanted to get the meds. Right. Like, if they had told you at had ADHD and that's why you keep drinking, it would feel probably better. I mean, I probably do. I, I think I took so much Adderall, it gave me ADHD. Right, <laughs> right, right. I think right. I ruined myself. <laughs> taken so much Adderall I didn't before but now I probably do I, I I just think this whole weird thing where people want to diagnose each other and then they're like feeling free to do that mm -hmm. you're just like what it's yeah. just wild to me that's no? crazy all right next up we got white people shit white people shit oh people well I think I'll be able to help on this one yeah hey Danny I've been making overnight oats and I was telling a coworker about them, and she said, that's white people shit. And I was wondering <laughs> if you agree. <laughs> KB. Yeah, making oats is white people shit all day. Niggas, I mean... Niggas, we ain't making no fucking oats. The man. Quaker oatmeal guy is probably the whitest person alive, Yeah, right? he had like, slaves. Did he? I'm pretty sure. <laughs> if anyone had slaves, this guy... I can guy... just tell he got a different smirk when it's cinnamon and brown sugar. He's just... <laughs> <laughs> He's winking. Yeah, he got a little... Like, yeah, you know what this one is. Well, so, this yeah. guy, no one is whiter than him. Yeah. You, you have the whitest person ever look created that. on the look box. Look at that look. Look at that look on his face. Look at that hair. That was drip, though. I feel like he was a fly motherfucker, though. Yeah, that hair... Look at it. Look at the look on his face. It just looked like he just said, nigga. <laughs> with the hard heart, dude. It looked like that. Like, he looked like the guy that was on that plane with the Burger King crown. That's Ooh. what he looked like. You remember the nigga with the Burger King crown? The white dude's like, kick that nigga bitch off the plane. I actually seen a whole documentary about him. And he was, you know why he was mad? Because he had, he got, he got, he got, um, they did that dating scam shit on him. He thought he was about to go meet a black bitch in Jamaica. Yeah, him. So he oh just God. became racist that day. Yeah, because he went to go meet up with a black bitch. And she, it turns out it wasn't no black bitch there for He is horrific looking. So he had to fly back. Like, kick that nigga bitch off the plane. All right. <laughs> it's one well, of my... It is strange that they all do kind of look like the Burger King mascot. And he had the Burger King hat on. That was, right. He was unhinged. Yeah, like, I this mean, is this a, guy's out of his mind. He was so horny going to Jamaica. He thought he was about to get that thing wind on him. Look. How long ago was this? Kick that nigga bitch off the plane! Oh my God! See, Quaker old smile. Wait, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> the way he turned and smiled is actually evil. That's the Quaker old. Right. They're still asking to stop yelling. That doesn't get you kicked off. So what? She gave me in the stomach. I don't no. care what she did. You're being Thank you. Shut the fuck up for two seconds. I want a lawsuit. I want a fucking lawsuit. Right. I don't think that's how lawsuits work. <laughs> I don't think that's a law. I want a lawsuit. <laughs> he does look, look like the Quaker guy. I told you, man. Racist. All right. Yeah. So not only is overnight oats white people shit, it's also racist. Yeah. I, I like a good oatmeal, though. I get to do you. Well, <laughs> I, think, I, think, I, get these, I think we have some debate here. They got these oatmeal bites at the HEB. They are they're great, man. They're really oatmeal bites. Yeah, they like they like cookies. They yeah, like but that's oatmeal. not the same as oatmeal. I mean, they're, they're oatmeal though. They're not cookies. No, 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 no. no they're no. not oatmeal cookies. They're are they, like oatmeal. Are they, are they together and they're yeah, chewy? Yeah, it's like somebody took an oatmeal and, and, and made a ball yeah, out of no, it. No, 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 no. Uh, listen, if you're eating overnight yeah, there they oats, go. The oatmeal bites right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a different. That's a whole different type of food. Yeah, they, they, they're that great. is not the same yeah, the as like Alyssa oatmeal. It's a yeah. like when you're doing overnight recommend. oats. Recommend. That, recommend these look great i'm sure they're delicious but i'm saying when you're doing overnight oats that is a lifestyle overnight is, oats yeah you're you're like making them before you go to bed you're you're living a, like a way that like and i'm sure it's a trial and error to that too 
Absolutely. A little water, more water, like you fucked too up much the oats water. And then you got, you found out in the morning, you're like, damn, Soupy man. Soupy oats. I was sleeping thinking about these oats, wake up in the morning. Yeah. And they fucked up. Like, Overnight fuck. oats is really gross. I mean, the look of it is not pleasant. Is, is it gross? Is it gross though? It's nasty? No, I like, I oh. used to eat oatmeal in the morning. That shit like looked good right there. That's what I was just saying. That right. shit looked good. <laughs> when I was trying to be really healthy, oatmeal was like my thing. And it was like, it was like tough to get through. Mm -hmm. Like it like tasted awful. I try and put like sweet and low in I it. I feel like oatmeal is one of those things. If you're eating it every day, yeah, eventually you're going to get tired. But every blue moon, oatmeal is, it's, that should be smacking. I mean, you want to have a great dump. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you have some oatmeal and you are, you're like, your dump, like a, a day after having oatmeal, you're like, I did like you like snap it off. You can hear it snap off. Your <laughs> oh my god! No, like it, it is like a question mark. You're like proud of it. You want to take pictures of it. You want to no. frame it. You want to do baby talk to it. All right, man. We it's we about to get ready to get up out of here in a minute, man. <laughs> Let's we go spin the wheel. I forgot to fucking. Uh, what about the music cues? Spin the wheel. You said you wasn't a music guy. Yeah, but I, was, I mean, I, I I like to be taught. I like. I'm bring me into your world. All right, around. Backstreet Boys are in sync. Uh, Backstreet Boys. Really? Yeah, I I thought that theirs went a little harder. They went a little harder, right? I thought the In Sync, like In Sync, was more produced. Backstreet In Sync became, to me, it, it was like a horse race where like Backstreet Boys started out in front, then In Sync yeah, yeah. just like came up the rear and just like totally owned the era. In Sync was more hood. Yeah, well, they, they had, had the, they you had know, the Justin banging. was doing a little bit yeah, more. It, it was some more nigga shit with, with rapping. It, it was they had to. It didn't really. They had the beats. They had the beats. That the, the hood Backstreet would fuck Boys with. had really good, passionate love songs. I just hated that one motherfucker with the soul patch. Which one is in he? Backstreet Boys? J.C. Chavez. He kind of ruined it for me. Well, yeah, he was like mother, old. The motherfucker looking like a magician right there. Yeah, he's but he was like oh yeah, that guy. Like I, he the, he the Chris Katan up the group. guy. Which he, one? Chris Kattan was pretty cool. The, the one uh, in the back? The one the, in the back on the right. Yeah, his ass. So you're talking about Kevin. Yeah, fuck Kevin. Kevin, I think he was like way older than the rest of them. I, I can tell. He was he was the weirdo. Yeah. He ruined the group. Can you imagine? Would you do that, Danny Brown? They come up to you and they're like, okay, Danny, we have an opportunity. Four young rappers. We just need you to like be in charge of the group. And you're how old? Yeah, I would do that because that'd be like more mentor time and shit. Right. And, and, you know, especially somebody that'd been through it before and, you know. To but it's got to be them. weird to like travel to the to world with like a bunch of 22 year olds. Up. Yeah, it, definitely weird, but you just, but you keep them out of trouble and, you know. I, and then you I get the like that would be, you're the old one. Yeah, like that would be like a calling for me to, you know, you could change, you might help somebody your life out because this right. music shit or just entertainment industry in general could fuck people up. Right. You so you, you would say that this would be the best thing that could ever happen yeah, because that would, you second can, chance. Yeah, like you, to like really go tour huge mm -hmm. and then you get this other group i wouldn't you, say second chance well the, I mean. do you get in like uh you know this opportunity <laughs> <laughs> that sounded bad not how i meant it it was it's this opportunity yeah to like take your career in a different direction and you get to make sure that these younger guys stay but it but then you become a babysitter i don't know no but that's what i'm saying i would feel like that would have been like a, a god calling to right. Be, uh, save somebody or help somebody because you know just with so many negative influences that surround that shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I mean, you can help somebody do it the right way. Right. Because kind of there's, there's no fucking book or no course. There's no on uh, that shit. You know it's trial and error. You know. So I've I've made. Dude, all you're the, a rapper doing a podcast. I've at made a all the wrong mistakes. You know. You know. Yeah. No. I. I. No one knows how this should go. Mm -hmm. You know. Like I'm saying, look at your career. Mm -hmm. You're here right now. This would be a weird thing. But for, I didn't start to 30. You didn't start till you were 30? I didn't get my first record deal till I was 30 years old. Really? Yeah. So it was, which made it worse in some sense, because I was like, damn, finally, now I'm about to be an asshole. You know? <laughs> now I'm about a to wild out. asshole. Now <laughs> I'm about to wild out, you know? And no one was going to give you, like, the the empathy of youth. Yeah, They were going to no. be like, oh, he's young. No. People were like, he's 30, still doesn't know how to fucking act. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so. so, yeah. So that that was my mistake. Yeah. You know? I was That's better. what people give you less chances, too. Yeah. That's the problem. And because you, you can't, you're already stuck in your ways. Right. There's no teaching, you know, at that point. Right. You were probably, I mean, at 30, I'm like me, I'd be like, I'm already a drinker. You've just given me more drinking money. Exactly. Right. Yeah. You just, you can't be 
you can't really be taken advantage of at that age. No, 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 no. That is, you know. And that's why they like working with younger people. Right. Because they they're easy to manipulate, too, you know? All right, let's spin the motherfucking wheel. What's spin the wheel? We're going to spin this motherfucking wheel. Okay. And we're going to hit a topic. And gonna, I hope baby voices comes it. up. Devotees. What's that? I have no idea. I thought you would know. Devotees? Yeah. Are you saying what's the meaning of the word? I mean, I, I kind of get the gist of the it's meaning of the people word. People who are devoted the, to someone? Yeah. What, what, what is going on here, guys? Uh, Cougar, you know what this one is? I think that one is... Uh, those are uh, people whose uh, sexual fetish... Oh um, shit! Is people that have handicaps? Oh wow! It's people who have handicaps? No, no, no people that uh, fetishize people with handicaps. Y'all getting too nasty with the with the sex shit, man. Like this is going too far. Yeah, no, this is this horrific. Is, uh, yeah. <laughs> also, I hate the name the Botis. because I they thought, want, so they get off to the idea that someone would be devoted to them because they need that they're needed. Is that what the name means? I'm I'm I'm. Traumatized. I'm on They're the ones that are devoted. That's it's okay. All right, let's just spin the wheel again. This is, <laughs> this is we not. Can you bring up like foot fetish? No, like, it's up normal. <laughs> Some fun. Is, who the? All right, man. I think Tanner suggested that one. Tanner, that sounds like might be his thing. Ketamine therapy. We talked about this like a few weeks ago. I feel like we got to change up shit on the wheel. But uh, ketamine therapy. Yeah. Now that's cat tranks. Yeah, I've, I've uh, you've done it. Yeah, when all the coke was gone. Is it good? Ketamine. I never really. I no. I, I didn't like it. Comic Sans. That's, that's a, a the way you write something. Yeah, it's that's a, a font. A, that's it's a, a font. font. It's, uh, yeah, it's. Uh, <laughs> is that what this podcast is? It's a font. It's. <laughs> is that why I'm in Austin it's to do this shit? I got to talk about a font. It's it's one of the most. Overused well, fonts. And it's, it's also... It's, it's one of the most hated fonts, but people use it a lot still. And it's just... Do you know it's Comic Sans? It's like, it's Sans something. There's It's it's without something. I just found this out from a... I did a... Uh, from the New York crossword puzzle. Isn't it Sans something? What is it? Yeah, I think I it's without like the little uh, like lines on the end of the words. It, right. You They're know? rounded. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't get the... I don't get the Comic Sans hate. I don't think it's a bad I, font I didn't know at people all. hated it. No, it's the most hated font in the world. Honestly, that's one of those things where you hear people hate it and you go, oh, you're it, a pain yeah, in the ass. You got too much time in your hand. You right. Care it's like people who like hate that. cilantro and then they talk about it all the time. You're like, oh. I love cilantro. Right. I'm like, I'm, I'm like okay with everything. Like everything is in the middle to me on a spectrum, so to speak. Um, but I just, it's one of those things where I'm like, oh, you're just like someone who moves their table at the restaurant a lot. Like I can tell. I only know about this because, um, like, it would be like certain events or like flyers and shit, and people be like, "Oh, he used Comic Sans on this. I ain't going to that shit." <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I don't think that person was buying a ticket anyway. Yeah, they was like, they, not going, they, "They don't even care about their flyers." Ariel, ah, yeah, yeah, I don't. So yeah, all right, we get a ready get up out of here, man. <laughs> Thank you, motherfuckers. Uh, Is this okay? I, yeah. I feel like we really got along. Yeah, definitely. Do yeah, you got some shit you want to plug? What's that? You got some shit you want to plug? Um, you know, follow me on social media, I guess. You know, Jared Freed. What else? Um, when does this come out? This is a that's a podcast question. I'm gonna be in I'm taping a special in Tarrytown. Oh, dope. Tarrytown, New York. I'm mm. taping a special. It's a one hour story about going to the beach with my parents. Oh shit. And it all connects and it's all fun. <laughs> it's like uh yeah, it's a it's now in an hour and fifteen minutes, but I gotta like shorten it. Okay. But all right. uh it's all about going to the beach with my parents. That that seems very interesting. Yeah, it's fun. It's a fun story to tell. People bring their parents. Bring your parents. If you're a millennial, it's like right up your alley. Like talk about, you know, my mom and my dad and how they try to get me to take my dad's Ozempic. That you know, that's like my dad's like offering me his Ozempic. N like a, he's like, just take my week. Of Ozempic? Yeah, because it's a one shot yeah, once yeah. a week. So he literally was like, just take it. And my mom was like, you should take it. I was like, don't you guys know this is insulting to say to someone? <laughs> <laughs> like, you can't just go up to someone. And I, so it's like shit like that, where like I just tell stories about my parents. Oh, dope. 
and they're like out of their minds and live in Boca. Oh shit! So, well, all right. Where in Detroit are you from? Um, I'm from the west side and the east side. Grew up um off the Gratiot, Flanders area, and then um, most of my family from the Linwood area. My mom's from Detroit. Where I used to go to all the time, Southfield. Okay, that's not Detroit, but. <laughs> Close enough. I mean, that's Southfield. Where, what is Southfield? It? That's where the niggas like we in the hood in Detroit. Like, man, one day I can move to Southfield. <laughs> I didn't say we had it hard. <laughs> I want to get out of Detroit one day if I can move to Southfield. But Southfield's actually became pretty gangster now. It's not like what it was. Right. I uh, s- I uh, like South yeah, Park. Like- I mean, I mean South um, Southfield, Oak Park. All those, like even some of the east east side suburbs, like it's 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 getting crazy. It's uh well the you know because a lot of people left mm-hmm. Michigan, you know? and you know gentrification shit too. Like downtown area is really nice now and shit now, and so it's like it's spreading. Well, my grandparents used to always every every time we talk about Detroit, they're like, it's coming back. It's coming. We back. all say that. That's people that really love Detroit. Yeah, they, and they love Detroit, yeah. so they would always talk because my grandfather worked in the city, like you know, his whole life, and. You'd always talk. It's kind of, and now you go back and you're like, it is kind of coming yeah, back. Like but it's it, always a one step forward, two step back kind of shit. Right. Well, they used to be like, it's coming back. And then they'd open those casinos. And I'm like, this the looks, casinos was the worst thing that ever happened. It was a bad happened. idea. That was, I, I was just, like I said, I was just there and I was staying at the casino and I was just seeing, like, Motherfuckers ain't have money in Detroit like that anyway. You're going to take the last little bit they right. had. You I, know? I, that's kind of what it looks like. And you go, it's depressing. It's And they look, I used to, I would say, Detroit, when they opened those casinos, it looked like the alternate 1985 from Back to the Future. Mm-hmm. You know, when they go to like Biff and then Biff yeah. has a casino. Like it kind of looked like that. And you're like, <laughs> and you're like this is, this doesn't even look like a city. Mm-hmm. Like I want it to look like, let's see a skyline. Yeah, like that's yeah. a beautiful part no, of the city. No, you're right. It, it's, it looks horrible, man. I mean. So now it looks better. I think it uh, I like the. The MGM is great. They got, a, they got an amazing spa, actually. There's, that's, that's Detroit. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, what Detroit reminded me of. No, but well, that the Shinola Hotel, Shinola's dope, Whew, beautiful. I but, like Shinola. No, this is great. It was a pleasure to meet you, man. Thank Likewise, you man. Yeah. It's great having you, man. So, yeah, we get ready to get up out of here, man. Love y'all, motherfuckers. See y'all same time, same channel. Peace.